The Amazing Spider-Man Issue number 24 Spider-Man Goes Mad This is the house Peter Parker lives in, and what could be more natural than finding Peter Parker himself inside? The doorbell has just rung, Pete has just answered it, and away we go. It's a COD for May Parker. Six dollars seventy-five cents. Aunt May's not here. I'll get the money from the cookie jar. Hmm, not much left. Here's seven bucks. Keep the change. It's the new hat she bought for Mrs. Watson's tea party. Poor Aunt May. No matter how she scrimps and pinches pennies, we just can't save any money. I've got to help out somehow. And I know just the way to do it. Exactly five minutes later. I haven't sold any news photos to Jonah Jameson in weeks because I've been busy studying. But now, with my trusty old camera hooked to my belt, I'm gonna find some hot news scoop to photograph, just like a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man should. Just my luck. I've never seen this city so quiet. I can't even find a jaywalker or a big bad litter bug to photograph. Uh-oh, what's that down there? Well, bless my britches. Looks like a nice healthy burglary going on down below. It's just small time stuff, but it'll pay better than a picture of Brooklyn Bridge. I'll set up the camera right here. Now, all I've got to do is wait until they come out with their loot. My only danger is I may get bored to death. But before very long. Hi guys, you're just in time for fun and games. Look, it's Spider-Man. Aw shucks, I wanted it to be a surprise. Well, now that you recognize me, let's get better acquainted. Wait, don't be shy, hang around for a while. I mustn't let them get out of camera range. I'll bet this looks awfully impressive in living color. Might as well wrap this up, kitties. My automatic film rule is probably used up by now. Uh-oh, my spider sense is tingling. Someone's behind me. Oh no, it's Foswell. He's still working for Jonah Jameson. Don't look at me that way, Spider-Man. I'm not one of that gang. I'm a reporter. I was passing by and I heard the commotion. Wait, where are you going? Drat the luck. Peter Parker can't sell pictures of that robbery to Jameson now. Boswell would remember that Parker wasn't there during the robbery. Only Spider-Man was. He might suspect my real identity. I can't afford to take the chance. Thus, after carefully destroying the negatives. What a fizzle that idea was. I'm all out of film, and I haven't even enough dough with me to buy any more. Well, while I'm in the neighborhood, I may as well drop over to see Betty. Maybe she can give me a lead about a photo scoop, which... Uh-oh. I'd better duck fast. Copy boy, where in places is that blasted copy boy? Good thing old Jonah didn't see me. He hates me hanging around if I haven't any pics for him. Copy boy! I sure wouldn't want to be the missing copy boy when JJ finds him. Well, now's my chance. Psst, Betty, got a few minutes to talk to a fella? Peter Parker, what on earth are you doing down there? Hiding from old Stoneface. Boy, how can you stand him all day? Oh, his bark is worse than his bite. Honestly, you look so silly down there. Better get down, Mr. Foswell is passing by. Ow, now I know how the Three Stooges must feel. You dropped a letter, Betty. It... it's addressed to Ned Leeds, the reporter who's in Europe. She's still writing to him. Oh, you... you found my letter. Couldn't help it, Betty. It fell right into my hands. I didn't know that you were still writing to Ned. You see, he just wrote to me and he said he was so lonely in Europe, being a stranger there and all that. It sort of brought out the mother instinct in you, huh? Peter, I never heard that tone in your voice before. Wait, you're not angry, are you? Why should I be angry? Just because my girl writes to some other fella? I've got to go now. Regards to your pen pal. Consumed by a nagging jealousy and hating himself for it, Peter Parker again changes to Spider-Man as he swings through the city, trying to drive the disappointment from his mind. What's wrong with me? 
What do I care who Betty writes to? We're not engaged. Then, finally, the mood passes and... I'd better get home before Aunt May returns. I wonder if Foswell and Jonah will use the story of me nabbing those burglars. And, at that very moment... I'll admit it's not much of a story, Mr. Jameson. Just a few punks cut by Spider-Man. Maybe we could hook it up a little. How about writing it as though Spider-Man is the villain? We can say he was brutal to those misguided crooks. Spider-Man is the one who sent you to jail months ago, Foswell. How do you feel about him now? I... I try not to think about him anymore. Okay, Foswell, let one of the sob sisters rewrite your story and put some schmaltz in it. I'll bet he's one guy who hates that mass menace more than I do. Say, that gives me a great idea for a new series. Instead of me always writing editorials against him, I'll print other people's opinions about why they all hate him. The next day, Jonah Jameson has reporters interviewing people all over town. Now then, ma'am, if you'll just speak into the microphone, I'll get your answer down on tape. Why do you hate Spider-Man? But... I never said I do hate Spider-Man. Look, do you want your name and picture in the paper, or don't you? Well, give me a minute. I'll think of some reason. And, under the right kind of questioning, it isn't long before the Daily Bugle reporters have the answers Jameson wants. If you ask me, he's too creepy looking in that mask and costume. Everyone knows he's a public menace. I say he should be in jail for life. What honest man would prowl the city at night the way he does? If he ain't just a plain crook, why don't he tell everybody who he is? Answer me that. I say he's a coward. He fights and then runs away. But in the vast sprawling metropolis, there is one who is ever loyal to Spider-Man. Hey, one side, one side, let me through. I want to talk to that crumb. Look, Big Mouth, my name's Flash Thompson, and I'm captain of the Midtown High football team. I think Spidey's the greatest, and you better print that. Uh, uh sorry, son, I'm, I'm all out of tape now. If you keep quoting only the people who hate Spider-Man, the only tape you'll need will be adhesive tape to put on that fat lip I'll give you. Do you read me? Sure, sure, we always try to be fair on the bugle. Well, uh, I've gotta run now. Meanwhile, Liz Allen, Flash's reluctant girlfriend, speaks to Peter Parker. BD, you're the best student in the entire senior class. I wonder if you'd do me a big favor. Sure, Liz. Anything I can. What is it? I'm doing badly in my craze in science. I was wondering if you could coach me some evening. You're such a whiz at it. Sure, Liz. The first chance I get, I'll be glad to. But by now, Spider-Man's biggest fan has reached the scene. Puny Parker's trying to beat my time with Liz again. How I hate that egg-headed bookworm. Thanks a million, PD dear. Well, I'll prove that I'm the one she's nuts about. Hi, Liz. I was just looking for you. Sorry, Flash. I can't stop now. I have to run. Toodaloo. So, she had time to talk to a nobody like you, but when I come along, why would anyone want to talk to you, bird brain? It gets boring using nothing but one-syllable words. It won't mean anything to beat him up now, with no one looking. But someday, when I get the chance, with a crowd around. Or Flash, if he ever found out he's wasting all that hatred on his web-slinking idol. Meanwhile, the first of Jameson's new anti-Spider-Man series hits the streets and almost immediately becomes the talk of the town. I never thought Spider-Man was so bad, but everybody else does. I guess I was in the wrong. Yeah, he must be a menace if everyone says he is. I am going to write to the mayor. Why isn't Spider-Man behind the bars? I say we ought to get up a petition. And, in the office of Jonah Jameson, all is sweetness and light. What a brainstorm this was. People are starting to hate Spider-Man all over again. And this time, it can't backfire against me. All I'm doing is publishing the result of an absolutely impartial, unbiased newspaper survey. La-da-dee, da-da-da. Mr. Jameson, Dr. Ludwig Reinhardt is here to see you. No, I'm in. I'll see anybody today. 
Tralandela. I am here on vacation from Europe. As a psychiatrist, I am very interested in reading about this Spider-Man of yours. I have handled cases similar to his. From my experience, I can say he is a very, very sick man. You see, he is in a fantasy world now. He wants to be a spider, but of course, he is a human being. It is only a matter of time before his ID and his ego get so confused that he forgets who he really is. And then he will suffer a severe breakdown. Sounds very logical, wonderfully logical, but how can you be so sure? If you are interested, I would be happy to provide proof of my theory. This case interests me greatly. I have much data I can show you. Excellent. Come back tonight at 8. I'll be waiting to see your proof, Doctor. Then, as soon as the psychiatrist has departed... Let me the press room prepare for an extra. An interview with a famous doctor who can prove Spider-Man is a nut. Miss Brat, send my editors in here fast. And the next day, after Ludwig Reinhardt has presented his findings to Jameson. Gosh, some European psychiatrist claims that Spider-Man is a mental case. He says he's sure to crack up real soon. Don't read such things, dear. They'll give you nightmares. They shouldn't print all that alarming crime news for young, impressionable boys and girls to read. Huh? Oh, n n no, I, I guess not, Aunt May. Phew, almost gave myself away. If you ask me, that horrible Spider-Man should be put in prison, just like any other menace to society. I've got to call Betty, see what she knows about Dr. Reinhardt. And so... Yes, Peter, the article is true. It seems this Dr. Ludwig Reinhardt is a famous European psychiatrist who is an expert on cases like this. He is convinced Spider-Man will soon become a mental case. Peter, why don't you say something? This is awful. What if I'm cracking up and I don't know it? I've got to find that doc. Talk to him. Make him realize he's wrong. But, just outside Pete's house, we find... Hmm, Liz wasn't home when I phoned, and now Parker is rushing off somewhere. I wonder if he's gonna meet her somewhere. But, it is virtually impossible to trail someone who possesses a spider sense without being detected. Hence... Flash Thompson is following me. I've got to shake him. If I find out that he's meeting Liz on the sly, I'll demolish him. My best bet is to take my spider beam from my belt holder and attach some webbing to it. Now's my chance, before Flash reaches the corner. Hooking onto the ledge, the skillfully thrown spider beam sends a sharp, bright light cutting through the evening darkness. Perfect. Flash can't miss it. Wow, we The Spider-Man signal. That means old Spidey himself must be nearby. His attention caught by the dazzling spider signal, Flash Thompson suddenly forgets the speeding youth who loses himself within the shadows. That was easy enough, and now I've got to change clothes so I can really move. I should learn where to find Reinhardt at the Daily Bugle. And as Peter Parker vanishes into the night, he leaves behind a mystified fellow teenager. I don't get it. The light went out. What happened to Spider-Man? Meantime, at the Bugle offices. It's Dr. Reinhardt, Mr. Jameson. He'll be over later tonight with still more evidence that Spider-Man's sanity can't last much longer. Good, good. I'll wait here all night for news like that. And on a nearby rooftop. There's a light on in Jameson's office. He'll know where I can find Dr. Reinhardt. I've got to see him. Glad I didn't forget to grab my spider beam again. But then, at that very instant... What's that? Something's coming out of the wall. Dr. Octopus, but what's he doing here? And how did he get through a solid wall? I've no time to puzzle out questions now. He's attacking me. I've never known him to move so silently, so noiselessly, like a jungle cat. If I can just grab his artificial arms quickly and tangle them together, I'll... What? He's gone vanished right before my eyes. But this is mad. Impossible. He's not a magician. How? But the teenage adventurer receives a new shock in the very next second. Sandman? 
rising right up from beneath my feet. What kind of a fantastic trap have I blundered into? There isn't even time to think, to devise a plan of action. He's coming right at me. And he's as silent as Dr. Octopus was, not saying a word. Then, moving like the experienced fighter he is, Spider-Man lashes out with a powerful blow, employing every ounce of his amazing spider strength. But then... Sandman vanished also. It... it isn't possible. And yet, it happened twice, right in front of me. Or... or did it really happen? What if that doctor is right? This could be the start of my crack-up. I've heard of things like this. It begins with hallucinations. The victim starts imagining things. I've got to get away. I need time to think. To clear my brain. What if I am becoming a schizoid? Perhaps this double identity bit is finally getting to me. And, with all my power, if I ever should lose my marbles, I really would be a terrible menace to mankind. But, once again, before Spider-Man can fully marshal his frightening thoughts, another arch enemy seems to have materialized out of nowhere. The Vulture, one of my first, most dangerous superpowered foes. Is he really there, or... I can't afford to take a chance. If he is real, I'm in deadly danger. But he's so silent, so wraith-like, just as the others were. Still, he's coming closer. I've got to stop him with my webbing. He vanished, just like the others. He must have been a figment of my imagination also. But what will happen to me now, now that I can't even trust my eyes or my senses? I can't go to Jameson now. I can't afford to be near anyone. I can't let others see what's happening to me. And what if it gets worse? What if I lose control completely? What if I can't tell what's real from what's imaginary? What if I should start attacking innocent people, thinking they're dangerous criminals? I'd have to be locked up, put away. I've got to stop thinking about it. Maybe I just need some rest. That's it. A chance to clear my head. A good night's sleep. I've probably been working too hard and worrying too much. It can't be anything more than that. It mustn't be. But then, quite by accident, the tormented youth glances towards the mirror and sees... It... It's worse than I thought. I'm white as a ghost. I must be in a state of complete shock. But how did it happen so suddenly? I was feeling fine. Or I imagined I was. Footsteps. It must be Aunt May. I, I can't let her see me this way. Peter, are you in, dear? I thought you might like some milk and a nice piece of cake. I can still make it with my spider speed if I use the other door. I don't think she saw me, but I can't worry about that now. I need help. Medical help. And I need it fast. He ran out and left the door wide open behind him. That just isn't like Peter. I'm sure he heard me, yet he dashed out without even answering. Something must be troubling the poor boy. If, if only he'd confide in me and let me help him. Why are most teenagers so reluctant to confide in those who love them? Meanwhile... Luckily, this newspaper mentioned Dr. Reinhardt's home address in its article. I've got to see him. I can't put it off any longer. I hope he's at home, but if he isn't, I'll go in and wait. I've no other choice. Door is open. Please come in and be seated. Thank you. He's got one of those new automatic door answering devices. I mustn't get cold feet now. I've got to go through with it. There's no other way. Even though he's never met me, Dr. Reinhardt predicted I'd crack up. He must understand my case better than I do. That door at the end of the hall just swung open. There's a light from the room within. He must be in there. I've always feared seeing psychiatrists before, lest they discover my true identity. But this time, I must take the chance. But then, as he reaches the doorway and peers inside, the costumed crusader cannot repress an involuntary cry of alarm as his heart seems to sink within him. Oh no, no, not again. Everything's upside down, but I'm not standing on the ceiling. I'd know it if I were on the ceiling, or would I? It's another hallucination. 
I can't stop imagining things. Amen, Spider-Man. I have been most anxious to meet you, you unfortunate fellow. Do not be afraid. I shall do my best to help you. No, it's too late for help. I'm going. I've got to run. Got to get away. Hide. Before I lose my mind completely. What is wrong? What has frightened you? Come back. You will be safe here. I can't take the chance. I might turn on you. Think you're someone else. Attack you. I can't trust myself any longer. But then, upon reaching the entrance hall again, the panicky crime fighter finds... Now I'm imagining that this is upside down too. The hallucinations are coming faster and faster. I can't control them. I... I must remain here. I don't dare run out into the street among all those innocent people. And so, the anguished lad turns back, his head spinning, his heart beating wildly, dazed, confused, not knowing where to turn, not knowing what to believe. That's better, my friend. Come with me. I shall help you. Don't let me harm anyone. Please. Please. Of course I won't. I want to examine you, learn what's troubling you. A case like yours will make medical history. Never before has a trained analyst probed the subconscious of a superpowered celebrity like you. But first I must have your complete confidence. You must see that there is nothing to fear. Look around you. Everything is perfectly normal, is it not? Yes, yes. Perhaps it isn't hopeless. Nothing is hopeless. Now come with me. This is my consulting room. It will be a haven for you. Everything is normal here also, but how do I know how long it will last? I've been imagining all sorts of strange things. I can't tell what is real any longer. The hallucinations keep coming and going. Of course, it is to be expected. You have been leading a double existence for too long. Your mind can no longer stand the strain. You were in grave need of prolonged psychotherapy. Doctor, I see them again, coming out of the walls, my old enemies, about to attack me. They're all around us. No, no, you must relax. I see nothing. I hear nothing. We are quite alone, I assure you. But why do they seem so real? I see them, I tell you. I see them as clearly as I see you. It is merely another symptom of your schizophrenia. Sit back. Shut your eyes. Not daring to disobey, Spider-Man does as he is told, and then, seconds later... They're gone. They vanished. Just as they did before. Of course. This means there is still a chance for you. Your brain is not yet completely divorced from everyday reality. Now, lie down on the couch and let your mind go blank. I shall begin your treatment immediately. I must do as he says. I must trust him. I've no one else to turn to. But now we must turn our attention to the offices of the Daily Bugle once again, although only for a short time. I wonder how much more overtime I'll have to put in tonight. I've got to see you, Mr. Jameson. Oh, here comes Foswell. He looks upset. It's about Ludwig Reinhardt. He can't change Oh no! And after all the write-ups I gave him in my paper, I'll be a laughingstock again! He said something about Dr. Reinhardt, but I couldn't hear it clearly. What could it have been? Contact the press room. Tell the new feature we're running about him. I'm going to see him myself. Yes, sir, Mr. Jameson. JJ looks furious. What could Foswell possibly have told him? Dread the luck. Now I'll have to stay here until Mr. Jameson returns. I can't leave his office deserted. I wonder where Peter is, and what he's doing. I hope he's not still angry with me. Meanwhile, it seems that Peter Parker is the subject of many thoughts. If Parker and Liz are out together, I'll bump into him sooner or later. And when I do, I'll make that clown wish he had stuck to his books instead of trying to make time with my gal. And then, as so often happens in life, the long arm of coincidence reaches out and... This is the place. That's Jonah Jameson. 
the guy who's always knocking Spider-Man. Hey, Mr. Jameson, why don't you stop picking on Spider-Man in your paper? I'm president of his Forest Hills fan club, and I want to protest the policy of Beat it, kid. If you've got a gripe, write me a letter. That's a fine way to talk to one of your readers. I even used to deliver your papers after school, but not anymore. Not since you've been trying to steam people up against Spidey. Okay, okay. My heart bleeds for you. Now get lost. That's all I need. A teenage fanatic needling me at a time like this. Well, I'll lose him when I go inside Reinhardt's house. Why don't you pick on the Human Torch for a while, or those nutty X-Men? Why don't you go play in traffic? Good. The door's unlocked. I won't have to listen to that oddball outside while I wait for someone to open it. There's a light in the back room. He must be in there. And what I've got to say to him can't wait. I'm going in now. I've got to find out if what Foswell told me was true. And if it was, Reinhardt will be sorry he ever heard of J. Jonah Jameson. And another thing. I may get some friends together to pick at your paper. While in the room ahead, we find... The root of your problem is, of course, your dual identity. But if you were to make your true identity known, much of the strain would be gone. I can't. I must never tell who I really am. I would hurt too many people. Really? Most interesting. Tell me who they are, and I'll be the judge. After all, you know you can trust me, don't you? You know I'm the only one who can help you. And you know you'll have to give up being Spider-Man. It's the only way to save yourself. The only way to keep from going completely mad. I... I guess you're right. Anything would be better than having these hallucinations. It won't do me any good being Spider-Man if I lose my mind in the process. But then, just at that most crucial, that most fateful moment... Reinhardt! I want to talk to you! You phony! I found out all about you! You're no doctor! You've got no license! You're a fraud! Jameson, stay away! Don't come in now! Wait outside! I only need another few minutes! I don't care what you need, you crook! I want to... what? Spider-Man? What are you doing here? What's going on? Oh, oh, now I get it. You must be in cahoots with that fraud. I should have guessed. What do you mean, calling Dr. Reinhardt a fraud? No, don't listen to him. You mustn't. And then, just when it seems that things simply can't get any more confusing. I heard someone shout Spider-Man's name. There you are. If you're in trouble, Spidey, I'll help you. I've always dreamed of fighting at your side. Flash, you fool. Stay out of this. Let go of me, you teenage psychopath, before I call your caper. Everything's ruined. I've got to escape. I'll trigger the control on my dummy hearing aid to create a diversion. No, you don't, Reinhardt. You're not getting away till I find out what this is all about. There are more of those hallucinations again, but somehow they look unreal now. They're not bothering me the way they did. Hey, what's going on here? Stop! Wait! Racing through the adjacent office in pursuit of his quarry, Spidey sees... I... I wasn't imagining things. The furniture is nailed to the ceiling. Everything is upside down. I came so close. If not for Jameson, I would have had him. Suddenly, regaining his confidence, the masked web spinner makes a flying tackle with the ease and precision of old. End of the line, Buster. You've got a lot of explaining to do. Then, yielding to a sudden impulse, Spider-Man grasps the psychiatrist's hair and gives it a sharp yank, revealing... How could I have been so asleep at the switch? Why didn't I guess sooner? It's my old enemy, Mysterio. Mysterio, the master of mystic effects and startling illusions. Minutes later. He's all yours, Jameson. I got the whole story out of him. And he's just dying to tell you, too. From now on, we better pick our doctors a lot more carefully. What kind of place is this? Who's that? Wait. I recognize him. Nice try, Mysterio. Better luck next time. But not too much better. 
Then, realizing his intricate scheme has failed completely, Mysterio sadly explains to the mystified J. Jonah Jameson and wide-eyed Flash Thompson. I've wanted revenge on Spider-Man for years. He's too strong to fight man to man, but I felt I could beat him if I made him lose confidence in himself, if I made him think he was cracking up. But I had to choose the right moment. I waited and waited, and then when the bugle started printing those interviews about him, I felt the time had come, so I posed as a psychiatrist. I planted doubts and fears in Spider-Man's mind. I knew he wouldn't be suspicious if I played my cards right, and it almost worked. My illusions succeeded perfectly. I watched him from a safe distance, operating my mechanical cat and bat, and my special movies of his former foes. It was simple to arrange the trick offices. I merely used duplicates. By the time he reached here, he was so agitated he was in a state of mind where she'd believe anything. It was all perfect. It should not have failed. I only needed another few seconds. I was about to make him unmask. I'd have learned his true identity. I'd have defeated him forever. But she was saved at the last minute. Saved by you. You mean, if I hadn't burst in just then, if I hadn't interrupted when I did, Spider-Man would finally have been defeated? I've hated him for years. I've planned a million schemes to discredit him, to defeat him, to destroy him. And now, when you were about to do it for me, I ruined everything. <laughs> so good old Spidey wins again. He beat Mysterio, and you were the one who helped him. What a gig. What a gas. Wait till I tell the gang. What a day. What a triumph. I actually saw my idol in action. He even spoke to me. And if he did call me a fool, he spoke to me. Boy, even that useless, sneaky, meat-headed Peter Parker can spoil the way I feel now. Wahoo! Then, a short time later... How about joining the rest of us girls for a soda, Liz? Love to, Connie. I'm just in the mood. Oh no, I can't. There's Peter Parker. I've got to talk to him. Oh, Petey. How about helping me with my science lessons now? Can you spare the time? Sure, Liz. I guess so. Well, how'd you like that? She left me flat to go off with puny Parker. I've got a good mind to tell Flash Thompson about this. I think it's so sweet of you to offer to help me, Petey. Yeesh, how I wish you wouldn't call me Petey. While waiting patiently at Peter's home, we find... If only I knew what was bothering Peter. The boy has no mother or father. I'm the only one to look after him. If only he'd let me. And then... Hi, Aunt May. I just wanted to tell you that I'll be over at Liz Allen's house for the next little while. I'm going to do some studying with her. Peter, I was wondering where you were, if you were all right. I was so worried about you. Hello, Mrs. Parker. Gosh, that's right. I forgot. I ran out of here like a shot without explaining to Aunt May. She must have been really upset. You look perfectly fine to me now, dear, but... You mustn't give me such frights. After all, Peter, you're all I have left in the world. If anything should ever happen to you... Aw, oh, gee, Aunt May. This is embarrassing. With Liz here. I'm sorry I rushed out that way before. Honest. I promise I won't do it again. Don't you worry about a thing. I'm just fine, okay? All right, Peter, dear. You run along with your young lady. I'll wait up until you come home. She's smiling again. Good. I hate to see her worry. I'm making progress at last. I finally have Petey all to myself for a while. He's so much more interesting than that empty-headed Flash. I'd rather be spending my time with Betty, but if she's going to keep on writing to Ned Leeds behind my back, I'll show her. Gosh, I just remembered. I still haven't earned that extra money I wanted to give to Aunt May. Thus, our tale is ended for now, as we reluctantly leave our little cast of characters until next issue.
Nothing conclusive has been settled between Peter and Betty, or between our hero and Flash Thompson, or indeed between anyone. And yet, isn't that the way of life? We never know what surprises are around the corner, and neither does the youth called Spider-Man. Spider-Man.